I just want to give a quick thanks to the Tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Sergeant Puma, Cat Crab Lobster, and Duck Machine. Thank you very much for the support. It is much appreciated. Our True Enemy, written by Mert with Yacht. Connection established. Auto transmission open. Greetings to all who may read this. I am Chief Intelligence Officer Pax-12. I am quite likely the last Chief Intelligence Officer left from our once great Kartex Empire. By merely beginning this transmission, my life is most certainly at risk, and my time short. So, I must begin with haste. The primary purpose of this transmission is to inform those true spawns of our great empress, of our real enemy, and the part that they played in our downfall. Many of you lost legions still holding out falsely believe that the Federation was the cause of our empire's fall. Though yes, the Federation is our enemy, and you are right to still wage war with them. They merely capitalized on the dagger that was thrusted into the Empire's back. To understand how our great and vast Empire has been reduced to this meager vassal, I must first give a brief history of us and this enemy. Before our Golden Age, our Empire was still feared among the galaxy. None could match our great fleets of war vessels. If we desired a star system, there was little to nothing any governing body could do or say to stop us. However, despite this overwhelming power in our navy, we had one crippling weakness. Now I can hear the cries of the true spawns that Kartax has no weakness, and I applaud your devotion to the Empire. However, ignoring our weakness is what led to our downfall, so we must face the truth. Though our machines of war were great and numerous, our infantry was severely lacking. This is primarily because our homeworld, the great seat of our empire, had a less than average gravitational field. The gravity well on Cortex Prime was 5% weaker than the galactic average. This weaker force meant that our species as a whole was physically impaired versus the rest of the galaxy. Because of our weak infantry, we could easily take a star system, but taking the planets within would be a long and drawn-out process. Each planet became a slow and costly war against guerrilla fighters and dug-in armies, taking the lives of untold numbers of Cartex. This was the primary determining factor with the slow growth of the Empire before the Golden Age. The start of the Golden Age was marked when one of our exploration ships venturing out in our frontier space discovered a peculiar planet. The planet discovered would be classified as a Class 4C hazard planet, meaning that the planet had ample amounts of vicious predators and toxic plant life. Now normally, these planets are simply marked for planet taming and left alone. But this one had developed something remarkable. This planet had intelligent life. Though the developing race was still in its primal state, it had all the marks of intelligence, tool use, spoken and written languages, social structure, even some agriculture. This was the first time intelligent life had ever formed on a hazard planet above Class Three. We immediately dispatched research vessels to investigate these fledgling beings and to gauge their usefulness to us. One was learned far surpassed any of our expectations. These beings, combat affinity, was almost unquantifiable. Many debates were held amongst the high generals to attempt to use this new species as our new shock troopers. Eventually, the high generals decided to test them and see if they could be taught to fight in the Emperor's name. Through a combined use of memory wipes and indoctrination therapy, we were able to convince these beings to become a servant of our Grand Empire. Once the generals saw this, they approved of the use of the new race and gave them a new name, the Havocs. Due to the Havocs' simplified body plan, we could easily design weapons and armor to arm and protect them. Also, since the bodies of the Havocs were significantly stronger than our own, 
They could easily wield our heaviest weapons and our sturdiest armor without fatigue. On the field of battle, they became living battering rams, smashing apart defense lines and making way for the rest of the troops. With a remarkable endurance and survival skills, they could outlast any gorilla and track them down to their dens for our artillery to decimate. With the aid of the Havocs, we were able to turn what would be a long and costly war to secure a planet into a swift and decisive occupation. And with this, our empire began to rise and claim its rightful place as the supreme rulers of this galaxy and possibly beyond. As a reward to the Havocs, we intended to completely assimilate their entire species into our empire. The Empress was even planning on bestowing upon them the title of Spear of the Empire, an honor few of even the High Generals have perceived. However, when plans were drawn up to formally induct the Havocs into the Empire, a realization was made. By doing so, we would be removing the Havocs from the crucible that was their home world. The High Generals agreed that this course of action had a chance of causing the Havocs to become soft, a chance that the Generals would not take. So I Empire continued to make many secret visits to the Havocs' homeworld and recruit troops, taking great care not to remove too many as to decline the population. It was decided to not reveal ourselves to the primal Harvex on the planet as it may disrupt the constant warring of their tribes. As the Harvex grew within our empire, it became clear that quite a few of them had the potential to become more than just shock troops. At first, some of them were promoted to lieutenants and field commanders, but after performing affinity tests for ship command and war tactics, Harvex was soon found in command of cruisers and frigates. After all, doing so circumvented all of the time it took to raise a cartex from a podling into a captain capable of guiding his ship. The following decades resulted in the most explosive growth that our empire had ever seen. Together with the Harvex, system after system fell under our empire's control. However, a change occurred within the Harvex. They began striving for higher and higher position in our legions. A few even began vying for the rank of High General, though they were always denied. I blame myself for not seeing the obvious signs. It was about this time our Empire encountered the Federation. At this time, the Federation only consisted of a handful of species and was considerably weaker than our Empire's might. They did have better technology but we held the numbers and maneuvering advantage. We began war with them, as was our custom, but as battles were fought, some of our ships went missing. We barely noticed, as where one ship fell, two more were already completed and being deployed. What we did notice was when our supply lines were cut. It happened so suddenly, seemingly out of nowhere, cargo ships were attacked and destroyed. Manufacturing plants were leveled, and shipyards were raided and dismantled. At first we thought that it was the Federation employing some stealth technology to get behind our lines, but when we saw who had launched the attacks, we were in complete shock. The Harvicks had betrayed us. They had used their high ranks to amass supplies, weapons, ships, and as many of their kind as they could, and pulled away from the front lines. They then launched attacks on the key points of our war machine, disabling it almost entirely. The next thing they did is the reason that I am most likely the last chief intelligence officer. They used the chaos they created to attack our distracted foreign intelligence HQ and seat of our empire. However, this was just not some attempt to disable our intelligence gathering abilities. This attack had a purpose. They sought after and deleted any and all information regarding their origins and eliminated any officers who had knowledge of their home world. This attack even costed the lives of a few of our high generals. With this, the Harvards had achieved their goal of removing any information as to where their home world was. I only survived because I had not completed the briefing on the subject yet. At this, the traitorous Harvex simply dug in our back lines and waited. 
Now, you true spawns may wonder why such an event was kept secret from you. The reason was, at the time, the surviving generals and intelligence officials decided to suppress any information about the betrayal. If such details made their way to the Federation, they could be emboldened as to launch an all-out offensive on our withering fronts. The issue of dealing with the traitors became extremely difficult to plan. Abandoning the front lines to deal with the traitors was not an option as doing so would allow the Federation time to prepare and adapt to our forces. However, leaving the betrayers where they were would inevitably result in losing the war with the Federation. Attempts were made to use different routes to supply the war effort, but they were quick to cut off as well. As the situation became dire, we received communications from the traitors. They offered that they would leave their position and retreat from Kartek space if all the Harvex currently in trading would be delivered to them. Normally, the only deal our empire would offer traitors would be a quick death if they surrendered. But with the looming defeat and our legions at the front, exceptions had to be made. We gave them what they wanted, and they fled from our empire. With the ongoing war with the Federation, we did not have the spare resources to pursue our betrayers. We did secretly keep a few of their kind to see how they broke their conditioning. Our scientists discovered that the Harvex brain is far more resistant to our memory wipes and indoctrination therapies than anticipated. The effects of both methods would slowly fade over time and the Harvex would gain back bits and pieces of their former lives. Due to the betrayal, our forces were not able to rebuild fast enough to overwhelm the Federation as was originally planned. The war was drawn out until the stalemate was reached, but the damage to our great empire was too much. The traitor's blow would take significant time to recover from, and the Federation was able to garner more allies during that time. Sensing our empire's weakness, the Federation and the allies came and picked us apart system by system until we arrived upon our current state. The Harvex during this time fled deep into the frontier space and split into two groups. The first abandoned the name we gave them and joined the Federation as the Humans. Many of these serve as spies and covert operations for the second group. The second still lurks in the frontier and deters any who would search for their home world and hunts those who know of it, myself included. From what I can tell, they seek to hide their home world from the rest of the galaxy until the primal Harvex there are ready to face the galaxy. These, um, Cubans have abandoned their name and their place within the Empire, and as true spawns of the Empress, we must punish these traitors as harshly as, uh, I can hear them now, pushing through my bunker's defenses. It appears that I'm out of time. To all the true spawns and any who have reason to hate the humans, know that their home system is nowhere in the frontier space of the old Cortex Empire's galactic eastern border. Their planet orbits the yellow star. Their system has four gas planets, in it two of which are ringed. Their planet's name is Earth. User vitals critical. Auto upload initiated. Termination request denied. Auto upload complete. Add addendum. Do not come for our home world. All those found trespassing and human exclusion zone will be met with destruction. And our former empress, we will never be your slaves again. Auto transmission closed. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed. And.